the Golden Knights meet the Colorado Avalanche, Chris Golick, uh, in what might be the final dress rehearsal of the preseason. We'll discuss it next right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hi again, everyone. Tony Cordasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Find us wherever you get your podcast. And please make sure to subscribe to our Lockdown Golden Knights YouTube channel. We are brought to you today by FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com. It is America's number one sports book. And that laughter at the start there in the open was because I thought VGK was playing San Jose tonight, and I was all ready to talk about the Sharks. So maybe we'll do a Sharks preview anyway. Uh, <laughs> whatever, yeah. you, whatever you say. Okay, so Bruce Cassidy will most likely play many of his veterans in tonight's game versus San Jose. No, versus Colorado at the Fortress. Um, yes, uh, we're going to perhaps see the Eichel line. We'll see Mark Stone. We'll be seeing action Tomas Hurdle will be playing tonight, and all the defensive pairs most likely will be in the lineup. That's what we should expect, correct? And Aiden I, Hill in the crease? Aiden Hill? Yeah, I think it's fair, and I honestly think you probably see very close to the same roster on Saturday as well. Um, the switch in the net, obviously. Coach Cassie said one will play one, one will play the other. So, yeah, I mean, this is the dress rehearsal. These... um. The dress rehearsal games last year, I remember, went very well for the Golden Knights. I think one was against the Kings in a rematch. and that I'm not sure. Either way, it doesn't matter. There were two dress rehearsal games last year. The Golden Knights looked very well and looked very good in both of them. So we'll see what happens tonight. A little bit strange because if they just played the Avalanche a couple nights ago and the Avalanche started to get sprinkle some of their vets in the lineup. Now you're going to see most likely McCarr, McKinnon, and obviously some of the other vets in there. and much closer to a dress rehearsal type of game for the Avalanche, too. So uh, hopefully it goes the Vegas Golden Knights way. I wouldn't necessarily predict the 6-1 to one outcome uh, like they did on Tuesday, though. Yeah, you do want to wind down now, uh, start to get everyone just in there to get some repetitions. And then on uh, Saturday, the final game against San Jose, uh, just be able there uh, to just tweak a few things and get everyone out of that game healthy uh, there's been so many brawls and incidents here in the preseason and injuries as well so you do want to get out of this uh, without any more injuries latest update on William Carlson uh, they said yesterday I believe Bruce, uh, Bruce Cassidy was just saying that Carlson what was he skating by himself yesterday mm -hmm. okay so He's yeah, been, no, that's a good thing. Um, on the injury front, back? I'm sorry. Are you still are, are you still saying he won't be back for the opener? If he's skating today, he's back for the opener. If he's if he's skating on Wednesday, that's a week. It's usually two or three days on your own, two or three days with the team, and then you're back. So he is on track for the opener. Obviously, there's a lot of variables between now and the opener. But if he's on the ice one week before the home opener, he's on track to play. So that's definitely a good thing. Um. The way the lines are, I mean, who knows? Maybe with Nick Waugh centering that second line tonight, I don't know if that necessarily is an indicator of Carlson waiting, you know, going to be ready to come back for opening night, but we'll just have to wait and see how it shakes out. You mentioned uh, preseason injuries. Number one, uh, they call him Wi-Fi, but Arbor Zheka is the is the player's name from the Montreal Canadiens. They, they call him Wi-Fi because his last name looks like a Wi-Fi password. Um <laughs> He's just he's a, a madman right now. He okay. is an absolute madman. I mean, first, he just jumps someone the same way that Bertuzzi did a while back. Obviously, this situation was as bad as, as the Bertuzzi-Steve Moore incident, thankfully. Um, and then he just just had head contact on Tim Stutzla for no apparent reason. Like, I don't know what's but up Stutzla, with this dude right now. But Stutzla had actually his stick had caused uh, his nose to get cut up. His own stick, his own stick hit him in the face. If you watch, fair enough. Replay, but if you watch the the type of hit, though, it still meets the criteria of a dirty hit. I'm going to defend him. He's my type of guy. I like those hits. 
<laughs> Fair enough. Um, and then back to the injuries. I was scrolling through this morning, and I'll mean, I find it on Twitter, but um, just of all the injuries that have happened in the preseason right now, and uh, it's funny. Well, that'll be a mention talked about in the CBA in the in the third segment. But I think uh, shortening the preseason was one of the dockets, uh, one of the items uh, on the CBA for discussion. Yeah, and uh, VGK. I think one of the things. So they did a good job of uh, pretty much just cutting down on the shots on net. Uh, we saw that against Colorado the other night. Uh, the other thing, too, that they really do need to improve on is the penalty kill and the power play. Special teams, I think, is so vital. Did they work on any of this yesterday? Has that become an everyday occurrence, do you think? Um, I would assume so, but I wasn't there, so I don't know. Um, but that was one of the things that Coach Cassidy has talked about, <clears throat> pardon me, needing more time to work on and things like that. As a matter of fact, uh, someone asked him in the press sir, he's like, no, we haven't done much of it at all. Um, so I don't know exactly how that's going to shake out, um, but it's a nice power play. I mean, you look at the players who are slated to be on that top unit. So what? Eichel, Hannafin's the quarterback. Hurdle's going to be taking the draws. Stone, and who am I missing in that last uh uh, Olison, right? Olison, probably. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, I, it's, it'll be interesting to see the the change in the the righty from the lefty stick. Um, much better for the the one timers on that right wing that March is so left vacated. So that could certainly help. I mean, all we hear about is Olison shot. All we hear about, and I'm, I'm I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm making fun of the situation, but I kind of am because that's all we heard about all season. Like the second they signed. Olsen, oh, he's got a shot. He's got. I can't wait to see this shot because it's going to be needed. And who knows? I mean, the dude may score, uh, you know, eighteen goals with the Golden Knights. But if eleven, are, if eleven come on the power play, okay. Yeah, Colorado's still trying to figure out uh, some of the pieces. Chris, we talked about it on yesterday's show. They still have to fill due to injuries uh, three spots on the roster. Wow. They cut ten players. Um, after the VGK game the other night, it was like and right after the game, like have, that. That talk about a news dump. They still have thirty players on their roster, so they're still going to have to uh, cut some players there. That's a team that has a lot of questions if they got that many players on their roster still, which could you be just as so. good as it is bad. Yeah, no, you would definitely think that they're still trying to figure things out. I know it doesn't matter in the preseason; they are zero and four. But at some point, wouldn't you like to just that see at least see more? Uh, competitiveness out of uh, the avalanche. Winning is a culture. Winning is adv- is um, uh, infectious to a degree. So, yeah, I mean, everyone would rather go out there and win. Um, I'm curious if they roll back with Georgiev after getting shellacked for six goals on Tuesday night. That would be very interesting <laughs> to see that. how that works out. So that was I, – I didn't understand why he's – I mean, I know the dude needs reps. It's preseason, but at one point <laughs> – are the reps just meaningless at that point? Like by goal number four, by the third period of the game? Like, I don't know. It's just. It, it's a contract whatever. here. He's trying to show off. He wants to. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Him. Or he'll or the, the other way around. They're looking no. to drag him. And, he'll, be yeah. the next, he'll be the next $8 million a year goaltender. Man, what a conversation yesterday, huh? I I stand by this, and I don't know, I don't know if we're going to be able to dive into this topic at all because now that season's starting and everything, but. Goalies shouldn't make more than seven, eight million bucks. End of story. I, I will, I'll. That's a flag. I, I will gladly plant, plant on a hill somewhere and argue with anyone. I mean, I was going up and back with some, with some goofball yesterday for a while on this topic and pulled up. I think seven different goalies in the last uh, twenty-one years that were like six hundred, six million and lower. And don't get me wrong. There's a lot of great goaltenders out there. You know, Vasilevsky and Hellebuck and all these guys that do make these. Uh, big contracts but put it to the defensive core put it for the defense and the golden knights i mean they're doing this with uh they're gonna have a decent net with uh six million dollars next season six to six and change uh the year they won the stanley cup technically just logan and aiden that was that was not even a three three million dollar hit to the aav between the two goalies it was 2.175 and uh logan's uh seven hundred and sixty six thousand dollars or whatever it was yeah, and uh, of course, uh, the players, one of the top players to watch, I think he's made the team now, uh, who I really was impressed with, and they are as well, 24-year-old Nikolai Kovalenko. I think he had, did he have four shots on goal, I think, in the second period of that uh, contest the other night? 
Uh, he was. I watched the third period of that game. I didn't catch the first and second, so I don't know. And you missed the Paisley tie as well, right, McCrimmon? And you missed the yes. note there. Did you go back and watch the third period? No, no. I just want to let you know. Hey, you forgot to mention Hannafin, and we got. We even had a pin for this guy. <laughs> Coming up next, the roster for VGK is pared down to twenty six. I was up at 3 o'clock this morning, bro. Uh, That's my excuse. We'll be back with more right after this on Locked On Golden Knights. The uh, line tonight is the Falcons minus 1.5 against the Bucks. The total on tonight's contest is 43.5. How do we know about this? Because it is there for the liking on FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook, the official betting partner of Locked On Golden Knights. So when you have a hunch in the middle of the game, or like me, in the middle of the night, you can check out the latest stats, view the live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You will get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Welcome back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Was VGK play tonight? Uh, we appreciate you making us your first listen every day. You could find us wherever you get your podcast. Uh, please make sure to subscribe uh, there on our uh, Locked On Golden Knights YouTube channel. Fridays are WTF. Saturdays, the Chris and Chris Jr. Show. Um, so, yes, I was... I was up early going, oh, yeah, they play the Sharks tonight. But the Sharks will be the finale for VGK. So, yesterday, three players for VGK, not 10. <laughs> that's that's an, They cut 10, so they had 40 players. Think about that at this late stage. So now they're down to They 30. were doing those longer practice sessions then, too. Cassidy, you can tell, just loves those three days. <laughs> that's Oh, yeah, that's right. And VGK took uh, the two practices – and combined it into one yesterday. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's that, that was uh, that's good. Early, early day, boys. <laughs> oh, you saw the tan, right? You saw the tan. Uh, he's in midseason form with that tan. Uh, so three that's players sent down uh, yesterday. Um, they were sent across, not down, my bad, across town to uh, Henderson. Uh, the biggest name, Akira Schmid, and uh, Schmid has accounted for himself very well here in the preseason. Uh, one goal in four and a half periods, I guess. Yeah, I think four and a half periods. Um, we're going to hear more from him. We know that as the season progresses. Yeah. And they just need to keep him sharp and uh, continue to develop him uh, there in Henderson. Mason Morelli, the forward. Um, I forgot that he was still on the roster, Chris. Morelli didn't do much for me watching no, him in the preseason. No, not he this preseason. He's not that player, to be fair. He's a... Uh... You know, he's not going to, and that's not a bad thing either, necessarily. And then uh, we'll avoid some more confusion because they sent Robert Haig, H-A-G-G, who will not be paired with Nick Haig, H-A-G-U-E, in the not-too-distant future. So uh, so those are the three cuts. Uh, we had the defenseman Haig, we had Morelli, and we had Schmid. The biggest thing now is what three forwards are going to go. The Golden Knights are are bringing eight defensemen. That's a that's a no brainer right now. So likely that William Carlson is going to be back for the season opener. Let's just assume that for a second. Percentages, right now. percentages, percentage that he's back. I will put him at seventy five percent or greater. Okay, it's right in the timeline of everything the Golden Knights do with an injury that's been mid term, where someone misses like a week, week and a half. Give them about five days to get going. They're six, set. They're seven days ahead. They're they're two days ahead of that five day window right now. So that's again a lot can change. But let's pretend. Let's assume Carlson is going to be playing right now, which is going to cause a shakeup of the lines. I would assume that pushes Howden back down, slides wild. However, it's going to end up happening. What does that mean? Which three forwards are going to get sent down? Um, my tweet yesterday, Zach Aston Reese. Your, didn't you use your highlighter? I, I, I did, yeah, I, I did. I used my used highlighter. Yes, highlighter. I, I, I right on the screen, right on the screen. I like um, that. Okay. I think Zach Ashton Reese ends up getting sent down. I think he's someone that can get sent down and clear waivers possibly, so the team can keep him in the organization. 
would you rather have Zach Aston, Reese, or Jonas Ronbjerg in the organization? I think the answer is Ronbjerg. No. Why? Okay, what has Ron Bjork done to improve his stock this preseason? I, I'm, I'm just the hype. His stock is flat. There's, but see, for me, there's no hype. He's a warm body that can play defense and kill penalties, and that's that's who he is. Not He's good around, around the net. We're not looking not, to change Ron Bjork. Boring. Okay, well, they no. want him to score. They do want him to score. They want everyone to score. But he, his his ceiling is a is a is a fourth line everyday player. That's Ron Bjork's ceiling right now. Zach Ashton Reese is. His ceiling is not that high, in my opinion. Three hundred plus NHL games. Enough said. Fair, Enough said. and the experience is definitely there. I still think Ron Bjerg's internal stock in the organization is a little bit higher. Now, that's going to contradict when I say Tanner Pearson. I think sticks around with the team who has six hundred games in that experience, who will be most likely on that fourth line left wing role, and I think he gets a contract any day now. That's just my guess. So by the end of today. By the end of today, it could be yeah, six o'clock. Uh, definitely will be announced. Zach New Ashton topic. Reese, though, I'll I'll say gets sent down, clears waivers, goes to Henderson, um, and then I'm still I'm still beating the drum. I know how the third line's going out there today with uh, Brisson and Holtz out there, but I'm still going to project Brisson and Holtz sent down. Man. I'm still gonna I'm still gonna bang that drum for another Brisso, another couple of days. Go ahead. If Briso comes out, I hate to cut. Sorry to cut you off. You're good. There. You're fine, dude. Um, if if Briso comes out in this game tonight and plays the way that he played and executes the way he did in the first period a couple of nights back, he's making this decision very tough, and that Paisley's just starting to wash away on that tie for Kelly McCrimmon. Paisley part. I can't. A question that I would love to hear someone ask is how much stock does coach Cassidy put into what you see in the games versus what you see in practices as far as making these decisions? Is it if someone's getting scoring all that means Zach Ashton Reese got on the board, what twice in the other game, does it matter? Brennan Brisson, you know, obviously got on the board. Uh, Lazinski and Pearson are finding ways. So you're on saying Lazinski sticks on opening night. I think Lazinski sticks on open. I absolutely do think Lazinski sticks on opening night. He's played himself, I think, onto this roster. Um, he's finding ways to back check and do all the important things that Coach Cassidy wants. Um, how this shakes out to the lines could be really interesting. But again, remember, Brisson and Holtz can go down to the American League without penalty, without waivers, without anyone having to any of the regulars besides possibly Zach Ash and Reese, who's not a regular, but he's obviously um, has a contract. He can get sent down though. Those players can get sent down without forcing Ron Bjerg to clear waivers, who I don't think would clear waivers. Reese might clear waivers. And if he doesn't find then so be it. That's not a big loss. And, you know, not, not disrespect the guy, but you know, I don't know what Reese's long-term outlook is going to be, but Lazinski and Pearson, I mean, depending if Carlson's going to be ready for day, for day one, they both might be on the roster on opening mm. night. They still may, they may be on the roster opening night without, with William Carlson. Yeah, that was my question, is about Lazinski, if Carlson is back at 100%. Uh, I go back to the opening presser, and someone had asked Kelly McCrimmon, I believe, might have also posed the question to Bruce Cassidy, Will VGK start the season with eight defensemen? Oh, God. And as, have to. as it stands now, they have eight defensemen on the roster. Yeah. I mean, are they going to, they're not going to put any of the top six through waivers, obviously. They're not going to put Ben Hutton on waivers. He'll get claimed in a second. And Caden Korzak is definitely has, I mean, Korzak could be trade baits. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the Golden Knights understand McCrimmon and Cassidy definitely and McPhee the need for, eight solid defensemen. I mean, we were joking last year with Cassidy. I think it was the Winnipeg Jets game. Was it four, five, or six games into the regular season? Korzak was out there in overtime as, at that time, the organization's ninth defenseman in the pecking order. And he took a shift in overtime. Someone asked him about it. And I don't know if it was Carpy or who was. I don't know who asked the question about him. And like, hey, what is this? Is this a testament to the depth of the organization when you're playing your ninth defenseman 
in overtime and Cassidy laughs it, I guess just because we're crazy or something. So Cassidy laughed it off right away. But point being is the, the city's going to need goaltenders and defensemen because stuff is going to happen. That's just the nature of uh, what happens in, in, in the NHL and more or less in Vegas. There's There's got to be an Indian burial ground somewhere below uh, the locker rooms of the Vegas Golden Knights because just all these weird things keep happening with uh, the defensemen and the goaltenders every single year. So they need eight defensemen, Tony. They need all eight of them. Can Korzak go down, though? Nope. To the nope. HL level? No, nope. right? He can't. Nope. He's done. So that was, oh, he's yeah. so happy. I, I talked to him just privately about that. He's he's very happy about that right now. Oh, that's excellent. And that's pretty good news. I think it was Steve Carr because I think his phone went off on the day as two and annoyed uh, Kelly McCrimmon. Coming up next. Poor Carpy. Uh, Poor Carpy. I missed it next to him. I had, to take, <laughs> I had to take a shot at our guy. Uh, the NHL is expected to begin collective bargaining agreement talks early. We'll tell you how soon negotiations could begin next, right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Welcome back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco, Chris Collick reporting from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. You could find us wherever you get your podcast. And please make sure to subscribe to our Locked On Golden Knights YouTube channel. That is where you can find the Chris Times Chris Jr. Show sometimes on Saturdays. And, of course, tomorrow, line up all of your comments. Uh, yeah, someone's going to take me to task for forgetting. Movie Tomorrow's Friday, Friday already. That's nuts. I know. It just flies by, right? It's WTF Day tomorrow. Uh, before we get into our own, do we have our own CBA talks, you and I? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we do, but they don't get anywhere. Yeah, they don't go anywhere. We're at an impasse for life. Uh, I did want to talk about Gary Patera being picked up on waivers. He will be a Boston Bruin. It's pretty interesting and a good move. That's terrific for him. It's good for Patera. Obviously, he's going to go up in the pecking order. I'm not sure what the, let's just assume Swayman's out of the picture for the moment. I don't know where that ranks Patera, if he's the NHL backup or the first up from the American League, but Either way, I think it's, you know, Yuri seemed like a good dude. He seemed decent at the position. He and I think he basically rotted away last season, unfortunately, with the Vegas Golden Knights, who refused to give him opportunities in net. Now, whether that was by... They gave up on him. They gave up I, they, I think they did, Tony. That's 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 the easiest way. To, that's, that's, yeah, done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this week, Gary Bettman told the NHL Board of Governors that the league, they plan to begin all the negotiations on a new CBA sometime in January in hopes of having them wrap up by the Stanley Cup final. And that would be tremendous for the fans, for the players, for the league, uh, the league trying to get out in front of uh, this expiration date, if you will, which is September the, uh, of 2026. So they would be way out in front of That's it, really a good. year ahead of really schedule good. plus, right? Um, and, of course, there will be some bumps in the road and what have you. But that is really good because this is a league, we talk about it frequently, that is ranked number four in the professional ranks, right? They're fourth overall. Uh, Are you like saying this, like as far as like revenue and stuff like that? As far as, yes, exposure, okay. revenue. Where, what about the MLS, Tony? Is the MLS making more money? Honest question, yeah. I don't know. I think, yeah, no, I wouldn't think so. But Okay, great, great I'll bet they're, I bet they're on their way, honestly. They could be, yeah, they have a bullet and they're soaring up, I'm sure. Um, but the league can ill afford to have another lockdown like we saw more than a decade ago. Um, this is an important time for the National Hockey League. Um, how about canceling an entire season the, the decade before that, too? I mean, the NHL, I mean, baseball has gone through this. I haven't really seen football almost went through it, but they got they got their stuff handled, thankfully. Um, where that was maybe about a decade ago as well now. Um, point being is, yeah, those are absolutely a, a crusher for every single person from us. God, could you imagine? Would we, would, would we be put on hiatus if uh, that happened? Like, God, I hope so. I mean, nothing to talk about. Um, but We'd make stuff up like today. It would be tough. That that would be tough. That would be tough. Um, so, yeah, I mean, certainly nice to see them talking about it. And I think I'm just going to dive in here. So, first of all, uh, all the injuries actually are in this article. So, listen to this right now. Drew Doughty, Patrick Laine, uh, David uh, Reinbacher, Artemi Panarin, Tim Stutzla, Brady Kachuk, 
and Celebrini. That's that's not a good preseason. So short the injury the the items on the docket that Saravelli talked about preseason uh, expansion. Ex, there's not like there's a lot of possibilities, but this is why they want to get the CBA out going now because there doesn't seem like anything moving for immediate expansion yet, which is not a bad thing. Um, and key, then you got a, a key factor there though in negotiations, which could drag this on, is that in expansion. The ownership groups make the money. Oh, the of course. Players, the players want their cut. So that's and that was the expansion. The article noted that there was what six billion dollars in wealth that went from players to owners in the last CBA or something. I don't know exactly how that works, but the point is they want definitely want to shift some of that money back to the players as well. And you know, there's enough money for everyone to go around, obviously. Don't get me wrong, but you know, there's nothing nothing better than watching millionaires and millionaires or billionaires and billionaires arguing over money with each other. That's uh, some of the best popcorn moments one can possibly have. Um, some other things they talk about, just some stuff with the Four Nations face-off, um, business things between owners and stuff like that. But a couple things that aren't in this article are the tax implications of playing in states without in state income tax. Mm -hmm. And then all this big deal about the LTIR and all this that everyone's flipping out about. Frank Saravelli didn't say a freaking word about it in this article. So, you know, the all these discussions about what's happened in Vegas and Tampa and Chicago and what's going to happen in Edmonton this year with Evander Kane and what's going to happen with other teams in the National Hockey League or even the Seth Jarvis contract where he's going to defer his payments for the next uh, half or for the next uh, 15 years or whatever. What almost happened with Jonathan March or so. Um, all these different things here that everyone is just flipping out about. It's going to change. It's going to change. It's not even being talked about, folks. It's not even being talked about. I think, I, I think you know, players, I think they deserve bigger chunks of salary. I think that they are underpaid in the National Hockey League when you compare them to the other major professional sports. So, I mean, honestly, like, if you think of some of the top players – in the NHL, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, you made a whopping 12 to $14 million per season. <laughs> to me, that's not enough scratchola. I think they deserve more money, and I think those contracts, again, we'll see the salary cap go up, but will it be, oh, and the cost of living, bro. I mean, some of us guys are just starving out there, making eight to ten million. Uh, but I do, I, I believe that they deserve to make more money in the NHL as professional athletes. And then you talk about all those injuries; some could be a uh, career-ending. And so I, I do believe that they need to make more money in the NHL. So I'm just trying to win. I'm trying to win the VGK locker room back. Is what I'm doing. Oh, and I just was handed a note. Okay. Can you talk right. about Hannafin? So, all right, a couple things here we can talk about. Number one, the NHL doesn't make what the NBA, the MLB, right. or the NFL. The, yeah. other, the other three major sports. I don't know if I repeated yeah. myself there or not. No, that's right. no. So, Steph Curry. Okay, fine. A one-year, $62 million contract He's extension overpaid. He's overpaid. after receiving, what, a four-year deal for $215 million? I mean... These are just asinine numbers here that represent greater than half of an individual team's salary in the NHL. Now, okay, $50 million to play basketball. That's a lot of money. That seems absolutely ridiculous, Tony. But if it's not going to Curry, it's going to the owner. I'd rather go to the player who is out there, you know, putting the work. Exactly. And not that the owners aren't doing the work and everything. No, but no that's don't, where we're don't tell me, Curry, I don't look at Curry as greedy for taking a $55 million single or a $60 million deal because if he doesn't, that's just more money in the owner's pocket. I'm not saying the owner shouldn't get paid. The owner, I know what it's like to be an owner of a business. I should get paid to do my work. But in the same breath, you know, it's you got to do what's right for everybody involved. And there's a happy medium somewhere in here. But I mean, I don't think this is a major issue as far as tying this back to hockey in the CBA. I don't think this I mean, well, here, NFL, here's another one, Tony. Those contracts aren't guaranteed depending on the player and the situation. Players get screwed over all the time in the NFL 
with these contract loopholes. And if they're not signed, if they're not, you know, signed by what the third of March, whatever, there's this weird date in March, they have to have a contract in place. If not, they lose their money. And, you know, so now you're seeing more contracts getting front loaded if you're the right player. But if you're not the right player, you could be in a really, really bad spot, at least in the NHL, unless you don't show up for a training camp. At least in the NHL, your money, once you sign that contract, you're getting paid unless there's a termination involved or something crazy like that. So that is somewhere something that the NHL has an advantage of over at least the NFL. I don't know how that works in baseball and uh, basketball. Uh, the other thing, too, that uh, we just wanted to talk a little bit more about, you had mentioned to shorten the preseason. So the plan here in the next CBA would be to cut it to three games right preseason and then expand the regular, one season, regular season game right or something like two that. regular season games up to 84 yeah you have to do it in pairs so you get one road and one at home. yeah no that's fair that's yeah i like that um i think that's not a bad thing i honestly the traditional people are gonna are gonna get on me for this but i think they should expand the playoffs by one spot in each conference and when i say expand the playoffs it's still going to be the traditional seven game series across the board, but I think eight and nine should should play each other in a one game playoff in each conference to get in to get the eight seed in the playoffs. I think that'd be a lot. I of like fun. that more revenue, more revenue, or bro. or even better, ninth and tenth play each other, and then the winner plays eight or something like that. If they want to expand it, I mean, it's all about keeping interest in those markets and. A single game winner take all to get into the Stanley Cup playoffs. I think that it's not just about the interest that one, well, the two games would add as far as revenue and things like that, but it's the interest. It's the fact that now a team in 11th place with six days to go still has a chance. They still have a chance that equates to TV viewership, tickets, beer, concessions. Utah concessions, there's that, that's going to be on WTF tomorrow. Utah okay. is absolutely. Uh, putting the league and uh, putting everyone in their place right now with their concession deals. For sure. We'll get to that on WTF day. And, uh, you know, for, for me, I just think uh, one of the other things that they have to put into the CBA is no 16 round shootouts in the preseason. It's gotta be in there. Right. I mean, are we going to see a shootout tonight? Are we going to see shootout practice tonight? We I'm haven't seen going. it in the preseason. I got. I, I, I'm working today. I'm not going tonight. We're, we'll, we'll we'll be there on Saturday. We'll be there on All Saturday. Right. We do appreciate everyone tuning in. Of course, uh, make sure that you subscribe to our Lockdown Golden Knights YouTube t uh, channel. Of course, at Lockdown VGK is where you can find. A little delirious, bro. I've been up all night. Uh, of course, you could find us on the X at Lockdown VGK to leave your WTF comments there. For my man, Chris Golick, I am Tony Cardasco. I might take a little nap here for a couple of minutes. Ooh, a Dasco good. nap. I'm ready two poppies like and I'm not going to sleep. It's 15 minutes, bro. I'm Tony Cardasco. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you again tomorrow right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. And please take care.